Welcome back to the show. Today, I'm titling the show, Make Them Feel Important. Make Them Feel Important. And the theme of the show is about influence. So let me begin by sharing some names with you that if you're old enough, you're going to remember some of the names. And I'm going to maybe ask you how you feel about those people and what those people meant to you. Let me share the first one. The first one's name is Robin Williams. You remember the late Robin Williams? I can remember watching him. Um, on a show called Mork from Ork. It was a very, very silly show about this alien guy that be, it would be saying Nanu Nanu if you're old enough. <clears throat> I think I just aged myself just then. But it was a really funny show about this character and he was with this lady and her dad was like, you know, anyway, long story short. But you remember, if you're old enough, a guy named Robin Williams and how his story and his shows caused us to laugh and how at the end of his life, it got very, very sad. So that, I would assume that, again, that Robin Williams may have impacted your life. How about something as simple as post-it notes? You say, John, what, you go from Robin Williams to post-it notes. We're talking about influence here today. Imagine if you and I didn't have post-it notes. I'm not going to get into details of how that was invented. It doesn't matter at the moment. But you and I, if you're the office type of person, use post-it notes all the time. So they post-it notes influence your life quite a bit. How about Levi jeans? Um, I can remember as a kid, we couldn't afford Levi jeans. I, I believe we wore Wrangler jeans back then. And it would have been really cool back then if I could have Levi jeans. And these days, at my age, that's pretty much all I wear is Levi jeans. It's a rare day when I wear another brand of of jeans because I'm really stuck on, on the feel and the look of Levi jeans. How about Apple? I'm not talking the fruit, I'm talking about the company, Apple. Can you imagine if Steve Jobs had not followed up on his dream or his goals? You know, this little phone I have my timer on for the show wouldn't be sitting here on this podium. And the iPad that many people use, and the iPhone, and all the other i stuff that's out there. And the evolution of Apple is developing consistently as a result of the influence of Steve Jobs and other many, many other people in his company. So and then we look at Microsoft, which is similar, kind of, sort of, to Apple and Bill Gates. And I mean, Bill Gates was a, a nerdy kid back then, if, you, if, I, if, if I could use that term, nerd. But he decided that he was really good at certain things. And he decided to, over the course of decades, to develop that talent and bring alongside him people that would uh, leverage his skills and his talents. I, I can remember years ago, in the late 80s, when we bought our first computer. It was a Packard Bell computer. And it was when the internet was very, very new. And back then, we had. Uh, it was called America Online. It's still out there today. And we would have to plug in our phone line, if you're old enough to remember this one. Plug in your phone line. And here, I'm not going to do the sound, but it was a very unique sound that it would make when you would connect with the internet. And then when, if somebody called you when you were on the internet, it would kick you off of the web so that you couldn't do what you were trying to do. It would be so annoying when somebody would call and you're right in the middle of a post or right in the middle of doing something and it would kick you offline. So the internet, obviously, is a, is a huge part of influence on mankind these days as a result of the idea of just a very few people. And then Star Wars, if you're into movies at all, Star Wars impacted the United States and the world as a result of George Lucas's idea and certain other authors' books that seeded those ideas. Again, we're talking about influencing the lives of people. There's an old, old quote that says, your influence on others is your net worth. You need to treat it as such. Again, your influence on others is your net worth. Treat it as such. Beatrix Potter, who wrote the tale of Peter Rabbit, wrote, I hold that a strongly marked personality can influence descendants for generations. Again, I hold that a strongly marked personality can influence descendants for generations. How many times can you think back to the people in your life that have been 
overt that have influenced your life, and then also people that have been covert. That is, people have been outgoing who've influenced you, and people that have been relatively quiet who have influenced you. I had a, a social studies teacher in 1979 by the name of Stephen Alsop, A-L-S-O-P. And Stephen Alsop was a, was a great teacher, I thought, and he taught us world history. And I believe, and I will believe that till I stop breathing, is that part of the reason why we ended up going international to adopt children is a result of what I learned in Mr. Alsop's world history class. Because I was exposed to things like India and China and other places I can't recall now. But the point is that I, he, he opened my mind to uh, places in the world that I didn't think about from day to day because I was from a little community in Lansdowne, Maryland that I grew up in and went to school in. So that was my little world. But he opened up my mind and my world in ways that I could not have imagined in dramatic ways. Roy Bennett said a few things I want to share. He said, one of the best ways to influence people is to make them feel important. Again, one of the best ways to influence people is to make them feel important. And then he followed up with that by saying, do more listening than talking, because talk more about them than about you. I want to invest a moment or two or three in those two concepts. When you and I make people feel important, you know what's going to be weird about it? It happens across the board. When you make people feel important, they are drawn to you. They are attracted to you, whereby the opposite is true. When you talk about yourself more than listening to other people talk about themselves, they actually push you away. How many times haven't you been in conversations where somebody really takes up the entire conversation? They'll talk nonstop for moments, two, three, four, five, ten minutes at a time. And it's supposed to be a dialogue, right? A conversation. But they talk and talk and talk and talk. And then by the time they're halfway through their monologue versus a dialogue, guess what? Your eyes are rolling back in your head and you're, you're semi-conscious and you're not even interested in the conversation anymore. Why? Because they're more interested about them and what they have to say than what you have to say. Hear me. When you get other people, when you ask other people to talk about themselves and their story, they are drawn to you, which is frankly oxymoronish, isn't it? It's oxymoronish to think that people would be attracted to you when you listen to them. But that's exactly how you can influence people in a dramatic way. Think about, again, if you're old enough, to remember a show on CNN uh, called Larry King Live. And Larry, Larry King Live has been one of my models, if you will, in doing certain things in my life. Larry King would ask a question and he would sit back and wait for an answer. He wouldn't interrupt. He would let the person finish their thought, whereas there have been other people, and I'll try to refrain from mentioning their names, is they will interrupt people consistently in the middle of a conversation because they think what they have to say is more important than what the other person has to say, and then the other person never gets a chance to complete an entire thought. Those kind of people, believe it or not, are rejected from society because they feel that what they have to say is more important than what other people have to say. 